I see you gather before me. Hungry, terrified, clutching your babes to your breast. Hey guys, Gizmo here. Let's talk about alchemy and how it works in The Witcher 3. As with the skill systems, I won't be going too much in depth, but rather give you an overview and point out important parts of alchemy, and try to give you an understanding on how it will work in The Witcher 3. Obviously, once the game is out, I will be able to do a proper in-depth review of each system and give you a greater overview of what's in it. As usual, you will find the timestamps for each section in the description for easy navigation. But first things first, before I go into what you can make in alchemy, let's talk about ingredients, alcohol and toxicity. The alchemy ingredients have changed somewhat compared to Witcher 2. Mainly, you now have base ingredients, such as plants, herbs, monster organs, food and other materials. And you also have advanced alchemy ingredients, such as hydrogenum or rubido, which you use to create new potions and upgrade existing ones. Now you need to gather base ingredients in order to make the advanced ones. Some items such as finding herbs or plants has been made a lot easier in The Witcher 3, as they are now displayed on the minimap as green leaf icons and they will pop up as you walk into their proximity. And of course, they will highlight up when you use your Witcher Sense similar to Witcher 2. If you think that the game is too easy or holding your hand too much, you can obviously turn off that feature and you can just try to stumble on them yourself or just rely on the Witcher Sense. Next, we have alcohol. Welcome travel. Drink with me, you cocksucker! In Witcher 3, it's not only used for getting drunk and getting some ladies, but it's also one of the most important base ingredients in alchemy. Alcohol's main purpose in alchemy will be to refill your potions, and I will go into that a little bit later. In Witcher 3, there are many different types of alcohol, and I'm certain you will try out every single one of them. Now, there is three ways you can get a hold of alcohol. The first way is by just making it yourself, by mixing herbs and water together in alchemy. Second way is the loot itself. All around the world in Witcher 3, if you loot the corpses or the dead enemies, or the crates or you know caravans or whatnot, you might find some alcohol on them. So make sure you check them all out, but just don't go on a killing spree and kill every single one that you can see in your way. And the last method is straight up buying it from shops or taverns. As long as you have enough coin, either Novigrad crowns or Temurian orans, you can just go and buy it and use it for alchemy. Or alternatively, you can just get absolutely wasted with all the ladies and not remember anything from the previous night. Toxicity is back in a Witcher 3. Similar to Witcher 2, when Geralt drinks potions or decoctions, he will slowly poison himself. The toxicity meter can be found under the health bar in the game and it will actively decrease over time, regardless whether you are in a combat or out of combat. There are certain skills that you can boost the tolerance of toxicity or increase the rate of how fast your toxicity levels go down. Now if you keep popping potions and decoctions and your toxicity bar fills all the way up, you will exit the safe threshold and you will start to feel side effects of high toxicity. Plus, you'll get to look all pretty and sexy like this. Oh yeah, baby! Now there are ways how you can counter toxicity, for example using Swallow Potion. However, if the levels of toxicity are too high, then even healing potions will not help and you will die. It is important that you manage or balance your toxicity correctly, as not only it can kill you, but there are also some skills that require you to be outside of safe threshold or to have more than 90% of toxicity in order to use them. So just be aware, manage it accordingly and drink responsibly. Potions in Witcher 3 have received quite an overhaul, compared to Witcher 2. In Witcher 3, you only have to brew the wanted potion once, and then thereafter, whenever you run out, you just refill the potion. Now the good thing about potions is that they come with the multiple doses or usages, meaning that you can have few consumptions before you have to refill it again. Now to refill a potion, you will need alcohol and meditation. Once you have meditated, your potion will refill automatically and the alcohol will be consumed in process. Another new cool feature with potions is that they can be upgraded into stronger versions, increasing its bonuses and number of doses it can be used for. As an example, you can upgrade Swallow Potion to Enhanced Swallow, and then you can upgrade further into Superior Swallow Potion, giving you increased health regeneration and number of uses before it will run out. You don't need any special build or skills to upgrade the potions, all you need is the right recipes which you can buy or loot or find in the world. Saying that, there is this one thing you should definitely keep in mind. Potions in Witcher 3, similar to your weapons, will have level requirements. So, for example, Enhanced Swallow Potion requires you to be level 20 before you can use it. 
And another thing to keep in mind is that the potions are classed as consumables, and there are only two slots for consumables in Geralt's inventory. So plan ahead which potions you will use before combat, and which you plan to use during combat. I did also notice that in the latest gameplay that the devs showed, you could equip the potions whilst in combat, which is good news in my opinion, but I could be wrong, let me know in the comments guys. Decoctions are a new addition to the Witcher world, and there are a few things that you should keep in mind when it comes to them. First of all, they are highly toxic, giving you immediately 100% toxicity. They only have one dose, or usage, and they have a long duration of 30 minutes. And lastly, you can't refill them, meaning once consumed, you would have to craft it again. Furthermore, one of the main ingredients for making decoctions are mutagens. So yeah, not a cheap thingy that you can simply put together and use up at any time. It requires you to think ahead and just consider when is the right time to use it. Even though decoctions are classed as consumables, they don't act as potions. Therefore, they will not receive buff bonuses such as 300% increase in durations that are meant for potions. Now, one might consider that decoctions might be too expensive and just too much hassle and it's just not worth it. I would disagree. Decoctions as such provide much larger bonuses compared to potions, so they're definitely worth checking out. It'll be a matter of you deciding whether the bonuses outweigh the negatives and how you manage your toxicity to handle everything else. For those who don't know, oils are something that you apply to your weapons in a Witcher world. And they increase damage, however, the damage is only increased against specific enemy types only. Meaning that the oils meant to hurt werewolves will not work against ghosts, for example. Therefore, they play an important role in a combat and in the preparation of a fight, as some monsters can only be damaged and killed only using specific oils that are applied to the weapons. Very much like potions, oils can be upgraded, offering a higher damage boost. Similar to potions though, you don't need any specific skills or builds, you just need the right recipe and the ingredients. Now the way oils actually work in The Witcher 3 has been changed as well. Instead of a timer like in The Witcher 2, in The Witcher 3 oils have no timer and have infinite duration. However, they do wear off as you use your weapons. So, similar to weapons taking damage over time and require repairing, oils will wear off after a certain amount of strikes you perform with your weapon. As far as projectiles go, whether you can apply oils to them or not is something that I actually don't know. So if you guys do know, please let me know in the comments. Lastly, we have bombs, items that you can throw at your enemies to do damage, stun them or poison them and so on and so forth. Now, similar to consumables, there are only two slots in your inventory for bombs that you can actually use in an active combat. In the beginning, you can only carry three bombs per time. However, with certain skills, you can increase the total number of bombs per type up to 8. This will allow you to carry a total of 16 bombs with yourself. So, if you want to go all pyromaniac on someone, knock yourself out. There are two ways of using bombs. A quick release, where you press the hot key for bombs, and a Geralt will throw the bomb at the monster you have your focus on. And the second way is where you hold down the hotkey and time slows down, allowing you to aim your bombs more precisely. This mechanic is very similar to the way they work in The Witcher 2. And as far as upgrading goes, I actually don't know. I don't have any information, but if you do, let me know whether you can or can't upgrade bombs in The Witcher 3. In The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt, alchemy allows you many different things and will enable you to become a very versatile monster slayer, allowing you to fight and kill monsters easier, as well as survive certain encounters. I hope you guys enjoyed this short overview of how alchemy works. If you have any questions or want to share your thoughts about alchemy, let me know in the comments below. It must suffice. If you found this helpful and you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing for further Witcher 3 related videos. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.